Welcome, 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 welcome to the simplicity of the gospel brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church of Christ Church in Barbados. Today I want to talk to you on the subject, get back to the Bible. I'm here to advocate this morning for a revival of the Bible. A revival of the Bible. I'm going to use as my text, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And there I want to tell you that we are being devoured and destroyed because of a lack of knowledge of the word of God. So here's what the word of God says. Be sober. People listen up to me this morning. Because, because of modern technology, you have the opportunity to listen to everybody preaching these days. All over the world, you can hear everybody, including Gino Jennings. And we're hearing a lot of inaccurate preaching. We're hearing a lot of trash. We are seeing a lot of things done in church that ought not to be done. But it is easy on the flesh. And because it is easy on the flesh, people want to do it, including Christians. That's not going to work. We are going to have to stand on what the Bible says. I'm going to get there in a minute. So this is what the Lord is saying to the Pegwell Community Church this morning. The Lord is saying to us, be sober. Don't behave like drunken people. Staggering all over the place, staggering from one church to another, staggering from one channel to another, staggering from one preacher to another. The Bible said, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So here the Lord is saying to us through Peter, number one, be sober. Don't behave as though you're intoxicated. You see when somebody is intoxicated with Mount Gay, you see how they behave? They don't know if they're going or coming. They don't know morning from night. Sometimes they wonder if they can recognize their own family. Brother, we can't be like that. The command to us this morning is to be sober. In other words, we could translate that as think straight. Number two, be vigilant, be watchful, be on the lookout. I'm bringing this message this morning because I, as I look over what's happening in the church, local and worldwide, I just see people who are sober these days. I see people who are looking to satisfy the lust of the flesh. Everything that is easy, I want to do. But when it comes to fighting, when it comes to really contending, there's a great lack. But the Lord says to us, be vigilant. And he tells us why. He says, because your adversary, the devil, he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Brethren, you are going to be devoured if you don't know the word. So I'm here to advocate that the Pegwell Community Church stays in the word of God. Those of you who don't come to church on Thursday night, there's a new invitation to you as we do Bible study. We want these numbers increased from 50 to 100. We want you to make a special effort to be in Bible study. Is that okay with you? There are four things I want to tell you specifically, and I want to continue tonight. Number one, in 1 Peter 5, 8, it tells us that the devil is seeking whom he may devour. Make sure that you are not in that group. How could you make sure that you're not in that group? Because you know the word. The Bible says this. I don't have the reference. The Bible says that we are destroyed. God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so at the Pegwell Community Church, we want to continue the way we've been always going. I don't necessarily want this church to be a modern church. And I want you to understand what that means. Not that we don't use some modern things. But I don't want us to change and swerve from the gospel of Jesus Christ. From what the Bible says. I don't want us to turn to what the flesh is saying. I want us to have a biblical worldview about everything. Because Hosea 4.6, my people 
are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I want you to get back to the Bible. I want to bring a piece of pen, a pen and a piece of paper when you come to church. Write down scripture references. Go home and learn them again. Meditate upon them. Re refresh yourself. Because God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We are getting back to the Bible because the adversary, like a roaring lion, is out there seeking whom he may devour. The devil is out to devour you. You will be devoured if you continue to pay attention to all the preaching and all the preachers that you hear going around the place. And you yourself are not rooted and grounded in the Lord. I'm going to come back to that. But let me tell you three other things that the Lord wants us to know this morning. The other one is found in Revelation chapter 3, verses 2 to 3. So the first point I'm making this morning is what? Be sober. Tell me, be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary is like a roaring lion. He's walking about seeing whom he may devour. Don't try to, as you serve God, want all, always the easy things of life. As soon as the trial comes, you back up. Conk me out, conk me out, conk me out. I'm trying to tell you this morning, you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to contend for the faith. You're going to have to lay hold on eternal life. You know, it's so easy to die. You're here today. You're gone tomorrow. And if we're not doing exactly what the word of God says, but we're doing what we want to say, we can find ourselves in a passage of scripture where it says, some people were talking to Jesus. And they said to him, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name did many wonderful works. The point I'm making here is this. You can come to church and do a lot of good things and still end up in hell. You can come to church and do a lot of good things and still end up in hell. Before I get that scripture, okay, listen to this. I'm trying to tell you to get back to the Bible. Not to the preachers that you are enamored with. Not, that the, pre not the preachers that you like. As a matter of fact, more often than not, the preacher that you like is the preacher that's not telling you the truth. More often than not, the preacher that you are all excited about is the preacher that's not telling you the truth. He's titillating your flesh. And that's how fallen man is. Man wants to live in the flesh. And so you find lots of people populate churches where the gospel is not preached because they want to walk in the flesh. And then at the end of the journey, this is what you hear. Many will say to me in that day, this is Jesus speaking, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name? Lord, in your name, did we not do many wonderful works? You would have thought those three things would have been enough to get us past the gate of heaven. But hear what the Lord is going to say to them. Then the Lord said, I will profess to them, I never knew you. Now understand what that means. It doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't know you like how you say you know your neighbor. The word know there means to have an intimate relationship with. It will say Adam knew his wife and she got pregnant. You understand the intimate relationship? So when he said, I never knew you, it's not that Jesus did not know that you were on the earth. That's not what it means. It means that you come to church and you see things happening in your life and you got the impression that it was because of you. You did not know that these things happened in your life. Go back to the verse before this. This happened because I'm keeping my word. These things are happening because I gave my word and I don't go back on my word. So you will, you will say, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Yeah, you're going to prophesy in your name because the Lord says in the last day, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. 
the Lord is not going to go back on that. So when these miraculous things happen in your life, you beat your chest like a gorilla and say, all is well. I'm on my way to heaven. No. It is that God is honoring his word. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? The Lord said, as you go, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons. So what I'm saying at this point right here now, I hope I'm making myself quite clear, is that the devil is seeking to devour you. He will do it if you don't know the word. The second thing that I'm trying to make here is that you have got to know the word of God. You've got to live the word of God. You've got to practice the word of God and do not depend on the fact that you are seeing something supernatural happening in your life. Give me an amen if you understand what I'm saying. Because if you look at the next verse, verse 23, hear what the Lord says. And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So you can work iniquity and still see miraculous things happening in your life. If you believe me, give me an amen. He's right there. He's right there. You could be practicing iniquity in your private life that nobody knows about. You could be practicing iniquity, iniquity and then you die like that. And you go before the Lord and say, but the Lord, I went to pay great community church every Sunday morning. Lord, I laid hands on the sick and see them recover. Lord, I did this and I did that. But the Lord said, I never knew you. Depart from me. Brethren, when the Lord said depart from me, it's not like you go to popular and you don't find in popular what you want to buy. So you go over to Massey and buy it. And if you don't find it there, you go over to Jordan's. That's not why it is, you know. When the Lord said, depart from me, just like the doctor said to me, you're going out to that blue building. Huh? When the Lord said, depart from me, where you think you're going? Where you think you're going? You think you're going someplace where you're going to be living in the lap of luxury? Do you think you're going to a place where you'll be able to make some correction? Do you think you'll be going to a place where you can repent now and decide, well, Lord, thank you for this chance. I'm going to, I'm going to go straight now. No. When the Lord says those words, those must be the saddest words in the Bible. Depart from me that work iniquity. It's like he's saying, Hell is your portion. The second thing I want to tell you, apart from being vigilant and being sober, is from the Revelation chapter 3, beginning at verse 2. The Lord is saying, be watchful. How about your works? Let me jump over to Galatians chapter 5, begin at verse 19. Let's look at some works of the flesh and see if you're still guilty of this. If you don't want to check your Bible, look up on the screen. Now, the works that I'm talking about are these adultery, fornication, 
uncleanness. Read with me, everybody. Lasciviousness. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past. Those who do such things. So let me give you a summary of the four things I want to tell you. Number one, the Lord is saying, get back to the Bible. Be, be sober, be vigilant, because there's a devil out there that wants to destroy you. The second thing he's saying is be watchful. Strengthen the things that remain, that are ready to die, because the Lord says, I've not found your works. I've not found your works good. I've not found your works good. The third thing he's saying is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let's all read it together. Okay, let's go loudly. Therefore, let's not sleep as do others, but let us watch. This is the third time the Lord is saying, let us watch and be sober. Let's not sleep. So if you're going to summarize the three things that I've given you so far, number one is be sober, be vigilant, be watchful. Strengthen the things that remain that are ready today. Number two. Number three is let us not watch. Let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. And number four is First Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. First Peter 4 verse 7. Read everybody. Here we have another thing introduced. We have prayer introduced. The end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Those are the four things that I want to tell you this morning that I believe the Lord laid on my heart to tell you. Be watchful, be sober. The devil is out there waiting to devour. Strengthen the things that remain, that are ready to die. Be, strength, be, be, be watchful. Strengthen the things that are ready to die. Let us pray. I want everybody to pray. Everybody pray. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name of Jesus. Lord, up here is the hot song. The simplicity of the gospel.